Hi, it's Ian from the Postal Hub Podcast. And Marek from Last Mile Experts. And we are The Last Mile Profits. This is the last word on The Last Mile. Marek, I haven't said much about it, but a couple of major announcements in drone delivery recently. Amazon Prime Air in the UK seems to be winding down its operations and Deutsche Post DHL is also quietly packing away drone deliveries. I somehow, you know, lots of people on TV, they've got catchphrases or on the radio, they've got catchphrases. My catchphrase somehow became drones are stupid. It's not the most intellectual <laughs> catchphrase, but hey, what catchphrases are? I mean, Homer Simpson's catchphrase was dull, for goodness sake. Anyway, am I being vindicated here, though, Marek, I suppose, is my question. <laughs> was Ian right? Because if I look out my window, the skies have not turned dark with delivery drones. I won't let you gloat too much, Ian, no. but you are partly right. I think the way that it was working and the large teams were not right, in my view, for the opportunities for drones. So drones make sense for specialist operators who really understand the space, who can leverage its opportunities to the full. And there are specialist companies, so one that I'm involved with, Future Aerial in the UK, which is creating very dedicated drone-related services. In their particular case, not so much related to delivery. There is There, there are examples, though, where you have shipment, let's say, of important medication, blood, etc. And those models make sense. And the classic, let's talk about where they do make sense and where they don't. So drones make an awful lot of sense where you've got point-to-point delivery between locations that won't change. So it's not your B2C e-commerce delivery. So Amazon is out. Prime now doesn't work. It's about hospital A to hospital B, particularly if hospital A urgently needs to deliver blood or something else to to the other hospital, and there happens to be a river or a congested city center in between. So that makes a lot of sense. You know, back in Oz, I can imagine that outside of the larger cities where you've got large areas which are perhaps not developed as well as they could be in terms of road infrastructure there could be scenarios where drones make sense to deliver urgent small items such as medicine or super important you know parts or something else small and urgent and then the final one which is the one actually that that i think swiss post were testing this was up mountains so i know when i go skiing sometimes you can you know travel one and a half hours a relatively short distance because of the quality of the roads and issues with driving up a mountain and a drone can do it probably in a fraction of the time So those are specific use cases, but those use cases are not Amazon Prime now and probably not many of the things Deutsche Post was doing with the drones. But anyway, I'm I'm wittering because I don't want you to gloat too much. So I think you're partly right. I think there is a a complete disconnect between a, a lot of the vision and commentary and speculation around drones and the practical realities of what they could really be. Just sticking with airborne drones for a moment, there was some discussion in the media not that long ago about this super fast delivery. So the likes of Gorillas and Getir and the others, you know, GoPath and all of those, so offering 10 minute, 15 minute delivery. And if those deliveries were replaced with a drone, how quickly the skies would become crowded. And one of the real, one of the potential benefits of drones is that they operate in uncrowded skies. So as soon as those skies get crowded, how well will drones function? Now, I'm sure that plenty of drone aficionados will start commenting below and saying, Ian, you're wrong, Ian, you're wrong. But Ian looks out the window, doesn't see drones, but I look out the window and I see lots of people riding around with, you know, those thermal backpacks on delivering for whether it's Just Eats or whether it's for Uber Eats or for whoever, right? It's not Just Eats, Just Eat. You know what I mean, right? There's plenty of them out there. But you're right. There's, there, there probably are specialised use cases where it's going to work. We know that DPD has done it, Swiss Post you mentioned. Uh, UPS has been doing that uh, medical delivery drone in, in limited trials in the USA. And there are some people who will say that it's regulation that's holding back the development of drone delivery. I'm not convinced that that's the case. I'm I think genuinely right. not convinced that's the case. There are plenty of people who will point out, though, that there is use of drones in, say, China. JD has been using drones not for last mile delivery, but for sort of that middle mile. Okay, there may be potential there. But I, where I do see some potential 
perhaps, is in ground-based drones, so the, the little wheeled robots. But even then, they have their own shortcomings. Mark, do you want to comment on that? Yeah, AGVs, I think. Ian, I think you're absolutely right. Forgetting everything else, and I think it's not just the legislation, it's command and control systems. How can you command and control several thousand or tens of thousands or actually hundreds of thousands of these things in more dense urban areas? You know, how do you ensure that, that none of them will fail and hurt somebody. What happens if something that you can't control, like a bird, hits a drone and the drone comes down? You know, there's lots of issues. And then finally, Ian, <laughs> where does the thing land? Because it's OK in suburban Melbourne, but what about the city centre? You know, it, it lands on the roof, so someone has to go up and pick up the parcel. So honestly, for now, there are far more efficient ways, either if it's, if it's a super fast food delivery then it will be, you know, the guy on a bicycle or a scooter. If it's less urgent, then it's much more efficient today to use a regular last mile delivery vehicle. But on top of the points I mentioned, I think there's another one, which is islands. I can see it happening, but perhaps bigger drones, not delivering individual items, mm. but delivering several items. So rather than having to wait for a ferry or have a helicopter deliver, that I can imagine really would be efficient. You can deliver, you know, several small parcels with one large drone to mm. an island. We know that uh, Croatian Post had tried something similar to get to plenty of islands in Croatia. Uh, Royal Mail was trialing a delivery drone for, and I can't remember exactly where it was. Uh, I remember the, the case. It, I can't remember which island either, not, but it was not, not big, long big, ago. Big drones. They were not the sort of the little ones you tend to see. Exactly. So, so the difficulties there is always going to be the weather. Now, obviously, the weather will also impact on shipping. So if you, your ability to put things on a ship and across a strait of, of water. But just quickly, Mark, I want to throw something in here really quickly at the end. When we talk about drone delivery, people talk about it because it is direct. It's, it's, it's as the crow flies and it is almost guaranteed to be faster in ter- just in terms of that transit. If we were able to reduce the amount of traffic on the road, basically the situation we had at that first wave of COVID in 2020, Delivery vehicles get a lot faster and then so much more efficient. If you combine less traffic on the road plus higher density drops, whether it's your one of your favourite topics, Mark, it's the old out-of-home delivery. Right, so it might be Pudos or parcel lockers. Or it might be that in larger apartment blocks, they actually have their own parcel lockers in the foyer, for example, meaning that, that those parcel, lock, parcel deliveries can be more efficient. We wouldn't even be having this conversation about metropolitan drone delivery. Drones would be that specialised thing for mountaintops, remote delivery, whatever it might be, if we were able to have more efficient delivery. This sort of ties into a bigger theme, though, Matic, where we talk about traffic, we talk about what kind of vehicles we're using, you know, that whether it's a cargo bike or a pedal-powered bike or an electric van or a diesel van and all these sorts of things in here. I know I'm going a long way from talking about drone delivery here, Matic, but I actually think that this is a more relevant thing for our industry to discuss. Drones are stupid. Drones are a distraction. They are a distraction and they allow the industry to talk about something that's frivolous and unimportant instead of talking about our responsibilities as an industry for ensuring efficient delivery with a minimum impact on the environment. The environment means not just emissions and all of that, but noise, traffic and congestion, all those sorts of things. Marduk, we're running out of time. I feel like I've actually stumbled upon something far more important than stupid drones. I can't let... (laughs) <laughs> the VC end with that because y- you're right. Sometimes people use drones in a stupid way. Drones aren't stupid themselves. They do have use cases that make an awful lot of sense. So I think it's about people being smart where they use drones. I wouldn't call them drones, but autonomous ground vehicles do have opportunities, not necessarily in the way that people plan them. So I don't imagine the Boston Dynamics robot being used at scale in a hurry, given costs and other issues. But I can imagine, but this is one for a whole new VC. You know, my favorite one, the autonomous vehicle that actually does what a current delivery vehicle does. It just means the driver doesn't have to physically drive and focus on other things. But that's for another day. I would say that drones, pretty smart, sometimes used in the best possible way. There we go. Everybody comment below. I'm ready for it. (laughs) Marta Krzyzewski, thanks for being part of The Last Mile Profits today. Thank you and thank you everyone.